for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My brethren, it feels great to be here in the presence of God. This is the fourth meeting, and God has been pouring blessings upon us. We've been shown many revelations and many great things. And one of the messages that God has given us, and here in the Holy Bible, in the second book of Samuel, chapter number 22, let's look at verse 33. God is my strength and power. It's King David who wrote this, but let's pay close attention to the last part. And he makes my way perfect. Is there something disturbing your life right now? Is there a problem that you're facing? Dr. Suarez, I just don't know what to do. God made perfect the way followed by David way back then. David wrote this because God wants to make your way perfect. And God is just perfect, brethren. He will provide you with all the solutions. God is my strength and power. There's nothing else you'll need. God is your strength. He is the place where you find shelter, where you will go, and the enemy cannot enter. And God is also your power. God shall grant you this blessing. Again, in 2 Samuel chapter 22, 33, God is my strength and power. Wow, that's some great power you have, my brethren. Have you thought about that? If I am as strong, let's say, as Mike Tyson, then I could just, just punch someone with my right hand and even Rocky will be knocked out. <laughs> let's forget about Rocky, let's talk about someone else. Or a UFC champion. <laughs> if I really punch them in the face, I'm sure I'll knock them out. But what if I, if I, I, I punch them, but if I punch the demon in the face, he'll be knocked out too, my brethren. My strength comes from God. But what if he tries to play hardball? He can't stand it. The strength that comes from God is, it's really, really powerful. You can, you can even become stronger than an ultimate fighting winner who tries to, to, to punch a little bird into his face. I mean, poor little bird. He'll see stars and never stand up. But it's much, much more than that. It's much more than an elephant crushing a flea into the ground. Poor flea, right? The elephant is so heavy. But God is much, much stronger. And, and what does God mean? That he is my, my stronghold, God is my strength, and he makes my way perfect, my brethren. He doesn't do it carelessly. God does it perfectly and completely. And our Lord God shall make my way perfect. Oh, glory to God. Amen, Jesus. Our Lord God plays an essential role in our lives, my brethren. But this is not the main message I want to discuss today. In about 20 seconds, I'll start discussing verse number 36 with you all. And this is very important. I'd like you to know more about it. After all, there are very important lessons for us to learn from our Lord God so that we can all learn these lessons and consequently develop as believers. And once we learn something from God, that lesson shall become a source of our strength, a source of victory. Moving on, let's open our Bibles to 2 Samuel 22, verse number 36. Let's read what's written here. This is King David explaining what a great conqueror he was thanks to the help of God. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. That's all. If David was able to be given the shield of salvation from God, then I am too. David fought countless battles back then and never lost a single one. He never left a battle with his arm cut or broken or even hurt his eye. It's quite the opposite. David would always win. And why would that happen to David? Because he was given the shield of protection by God, of God's salvation. And we all should make use of that shield always in any battle we fight because the enemy will threaten you. All right, you've taken your kidney, and but I'm going to affect your liver. I'm going to do it. No, you shall not affect anything. I was given the shield of salvation by God, and this shield belongs to me. Let's continue. There's a beautiful message here for us next. Your gentleness. It's not as if God was being rude. Hey, David, you have to do this. Listen, David, you moron. It wasn't like that at all. Your gentleness has made me great. God is a real gentleman. He is our father. He's a friend. And whenever God speaks to us, he uses gentleness. We can feel it in his holy word. Well, hang on. There's a blessing right here. That revelation shall make us all greater. With God's revelation, we shall leave behind all the problems that are holding us back and also all the battles that could be stressing out our daily lives. We leave behind any frustration imposed by life itself and we're able to fulfill ourselves and be made great in our faith. After all, through faith, we shall be able to win any battle we fight. This is precisely what our Lord God guarantees in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 33. All we have to do is simply take possession of everything that belongs to us. Your gentleness has made me great. 
2 Samuel 22, verse 36. Let the gentleness of God act as your guide, and you shall see that God shall make you all great as well. Let us pray now. God, there's lots of information, and it pleases us. It's strong. And our Lord, we want to feed from your holy word. We want to feel, my dear God, this wonderful strength in our hearts, and then we shall be able to fight the battle, and we shall never doubt whether we're going to win or not, for we shall be winners indeed. Win and win and win, and we shall never be defeated. I now join my faith with the faith of those people who are fighting for their health right now, whether for their body, their soul, their spirit, or the health of a relative, any aspect of their health. And this is what I say, you unclean spirit who has been oppressing this person, as a minister of the word of God, I now paralyze all your activity and I command you to leave now, disappear and never come back, never again, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you say amen. Oh, praise the Lord. My brethren, now we're going to watch a video from Belo Horizonte of a special miracle. God has been performing so many miracles and they all make our faith stronger. Let's watch a video of a testimony. What's your name? Julio. Julio, how old are you? I'm 88 years old. 88? Isn't that wonderful, brethren? May God help you and may everyone here live to the age of 88. Amen? And what just happened to you? I feel great now. I have this problem in my spine. It's been 60 years. I've had this problem in my spine now. 60 years he's had a problem with his spine. And what did it prevent you from doing? Well, I couldn't do a few things, you know, like bending and things like and that. And what just happened I to you? I feel better. I wasn't able to bend, bend my knees down. I couldn't do that. Right. If I Why don't tried we try to, to squat this, now? I wasn't able to stand up straight again. How do you feel now? I can do it now. When was the last time you squatted? Well, it's been a long time now. It's been quite was a while. Was it difficult to walk? Well, it was walking. It didn't prevent us from walking, but I couldn't walk that fast, you know. How did you walk before? I Show us. I walked quite slowly. Like this? That's right. You walked like an old man? That's right. Let's walk normally. I couldn't run, you know. It's quite hard. Walk with me now, and let's take a victory lap, Julio. Look at this, brethren. But you said you weren't able to run. So why don't we run a little bit now? Sure. Let's go, Julia, let's go. Look at that, brethren. It's wonderful. Oh, Jesus, you are wonderful. After all, God is our strength. God is our power. My brethren, hold on to that. It's written in the Bible that God renews your youth like the eagles. You shouldn't allow yourself to grow old. No, God, I want you to renew my faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 reads as follows. And what more shall I say? This passage refers to the heroes of faith. For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. Now this expression we read here through faith means by the means of faith. Once you hear the word of God, it grows inside you. It's a certainty. The Bible calls it faith. And that faith is a teacher. That faith shall teach you many lessons. And every lesson taught you by faith, it becomes uh, one of the the manners that God uses to do his work. One of the means God uses to do his work in your life. Many names are mentioned in this passage. Gideon, whom we've discussed many times, and Barak. We've talked about Barak. You can read about Barak in the Old Testament in the book of Judges, chapter 4. I'm going to quickly sum this passage for you, otherwise I won't have enough time to preach everything that I want. It's Judges, chapter 4. This chapter starts by saying that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And what happened to them? God sold them. God handed them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. The commander of Jabin's army was rather well known back then. He had 900 chariots of iron. And the children of Israel had nothing. That oppression lasted for 20 years. And it was harsh. There are people who are also oppressed today for nearly 20 years or more than that, but they decided to pray. They started to pray to God and prayed hard. And when they started to pray, God began to work in their lives. First, God spoke to a man named Barak. 
And God said, You shall rise against them and put an end to their captivity. And Barak knew that once God speaks, well, people feel certainty. I'm sure that God spoke to me. God wants me to do that. But it's up to the person to decide whether to follow God or not. Those who choose to follow God are wise. Those who choose not to follow him shall eventually lose everything they could be given. After all, they just, they gave up and waited for God to work for them. But then Deborah prophesied that and she sent and called for Barak. I'm talking about chapter 4, summing it up so that I can talk about the message I have for you. She said, listen, Barak, didn't God come and talk to you and tell you to rise and deploy troops at Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men? What are you waiting for? He said, God spoke to me indeed, but I'll go if you go with me. She said, I'll go with you, but there will be no glory for you. There will be glory for a woman who was not Deborah, but a woman who ended up killing that Sisera man in a very foolish way, actually. Such a great hero, and yet he died just like other foolish men will die. But then Barak left for battle, and they won it. And in chapter number five, Deborah sang a song, and let's discuss that. It's very important. You should read it later so that you can learn more about it. Let's start reading with verse number 12. Judges chapter five. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, sing a song. She's singing a song here. Arise, Barak, and lead your captives away, O son of Abinoam. And then verse 13, then the survivors came down. They were survivors indeed. They were powerful men. Everybody would fear them. Nevertheless, God caused Barak to rise against them. The people against the nobles. The Lord came down for me against the mighty. My brethren, it doesn't matter if the affliction that has been affecting you is devastating, disastrous, catastrophic. My brethren, you have to be with God so that you can destroy all of your problems. You have to make a covenant with God. And once you heed the voice of God, you will be able to see that God shall make you come down against the mighty, both the nobles and the mighty. There's no such thing as there's a disease or an unclean spirit, and no one can do anything about it. Our Lord God can destroy it. Let's continue reading. From Ephraim were those whose roots were in Amalek. After you, Benjamin, with your peoples, from Makir, rulers came down, and from Zebulun, those who bear the recruiter's staff. These are people who heard the call of God and decided to help. Once you find yourself in the middle of a struggle, my brethren, fear not. If you need any kind of help, even here at our meeting, you shall find people who are doing fine in the presence of God, but they will look at you and feel it in their hearts. I'm going to intercede for that person in my prayer. And without knowing what's happening or knowing you at all, people come before the presence of God, determine it, and afterwards you're going to tell everyone about the blessing that was bestowed upon you. That's one more person you helped through me. This is extremely important in the house of God. Those who won't come to the house of God don't know what they're missing. God ministers here. This is the house where he ministers, but I serve God in my own house. Sure, the faith show truly is a great blessing when you can't come to church, but at least on Sundays, even if you have to walk 100 miles or 200 miles, you have to come to the house of God to take part in the meeting, to be given God's guidance and pray, and in this way you're able to be guided by the Spirit of God. Let's continue reading now. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. As Issachar, so was Barak sent into the valley under his command. Do you see this? The great hero of Israel didn't even have a horse, an ass, or a donkey he could ride. Sisera had 900 chariots. How many horses did Sisera have? How many riders were there? We're not sure. He has such a huge army, we don't know. Thousands of warriors with great weapons. And Barak, who decided to fight that huge group of men, he gathered 10,000 people and he was sent on his own feet because God wanted the enemy to be humiliated. The children of God didn't need to have great, wonderful horses. The children of God didn't need to have great weapons so they could fight because the children of God already had great weapons. God went before them. But Dr. Suarez, if only God went before me, if only cut that out, you have absolutely everything that God wants you to have so that you're able to become a winner in the name of Jesus. Quit envying the things, uh, wanting something from someone. No, God gave you everything. And there's no such thing as the demon is going to turn to me now and is going to threaten me and I'm going to become desperate. Oh my Lord, what's going to happen to me? That is something that would make God sad for sure. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, 
My soul has no pleasure in him. We are not the kind of people who draw back and perish, brethren. We're the kind of people who move forward towards victory. We're the kind of people who have confidence in God, and even though we have to walk on our own feet, I'll go on foot because it feels much better this way. The walk will surely prepare us for the battle. Those who are on horseback will have to do some exercises later when they get there, some stretching or something, so that they're able to fight. I've walked for miles. I'm completely ready to get there and fight. And Barak walked there. When Sisera saw that, he probably laughed hard with his soldiers. Are those the men that have come to wrestle with us? These men seem like they're starving. They look like vagabonds. Those are the ones, yes, they're the ones who walk with God. There are great messages we find in the Word of God which mean a lot to us. As Issachar, so was Barak sent into the valley under his command, the place where the battle would happen, in Megiddo, where they say the last battle before Jesus Christ comes back will take place. Among the divisions of Reuben, there were great resolves of heart. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds? To hear the pipings for the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. He was uncertain. He didn't know what to do. That's why the question was asked, why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the pipings for the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of heart. This is typical of believers who say, no, unless I understand it, I won't go. You don't have to understand anything. You have to listen to what God says. If God convinces you, here I am, my Lord. I'm going to do as you command. Whoever is guided by the Holy Spirit of God who is born again, they are just like the wind, which cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes, but we hear the voice of God and follow it. Therefore, God wants me to do this, and I'm going to do it. But what if there's no such thing? Forget all about this what-if story. The enemy is going to rise. Forget about it. God is by your side. God is going to protect you. He's a consuming fire. God will give you victory. God is going to make you stand on your feet in order for you to succeed. In Judges 5, 17 and 18, Gilead stayed behind the Jordan. He didn't fight that battle. And why did Dan remain on ships? So he didn't fight too. Asher continued at the seashore and stayed by his inlets. Zebulun is a people who jeopardized their lives to the point of death. And that's the kind of people God needs. The kind of people who don't waste time. People who won't save time in the presence of the Lord God. People who won't waste a minute. That man jeopardized his life to the point of death. My brethren, a battle is a battle. A war is not something else. It means war. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Has God indicated there's something wrong with someone? It could be any of us, Dr. Suarez or any pastor, enter into battle. God is calling you to come and fight. Zebulun jeopardized his life to the point of death. He didn't waste his time gossiping around, no, I'm going there and we shall win this. And he went into battle determined and the children of Israel won the battle and God took note of that. Hmm, you sat among the sheepfolds. You remained on ships. You stayed in the port. You decided to go to your country house. You went to our beach house. You wanted to earn more money. You did this and that, but not that man. He consecrated himself. He prayed, this one is mine. He shall be duly rewarded for that. God knows how to differentiate between those who follow his commands, those who heed his voice, and those who decide to listen to it. Zebulun is a people who jeopardized their lives to the point of death. They went and fought, but they didn't die, they won. Naphtali also on the heights of the battlefield. The war was happening and Naphtali came to fight. We shall win this war and we shall destroy the enemy and we shall become winners. The kings came and fought. God spoke to their hearts one by one. Then the kings of Canaan fought in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They took no spoils of silver. They didn't sell themselves, and that's something unusual. We see it even today, to hire armies. That French Foreign Legion, for instance, you have no idea how many wars they fight all over the world, and people will pay them. Someone once told me, Dr. Suarez, I was in five different wars, and I didn't die. I didn't die in that plane that fell right there in the Atlantic, thanks to a miracle. Because during war in this place, I'm not going to say any names because I don't want any trouble. He said, I hurt my knee really bad. They operated on me and told me to go home and get some rest. And there was my opportunity right there. Their contract lasts five years. They can't leave the army. The opportunity was to go or not. So I went. The day before I felt this urge in my heart, I was a believer by then. 
and I thought I'm not going. If I had chosen to get on that plane, I would have disappeared into the sea. How serious that is. But back then, they also had this practice of getting paid. That is, taking silver for their work. But those men came to help the war, not for money, but because God had spoken to them. Oh, my brethren, it's just so great when people are volunteers, not out of sheer interest, but because they volunteer to do something because of God's calling. They fought from the heavens. The stars from their courses fought against Sisera. Even nature joined them in that fight. Those stars that were used by them as a reference. Look at that star. That's Ursa Major. Oh, let's go that way because the stars are over there. We're being crazy here. The stars ended up misleading those people. They didn't have compasses. They used the stars. And they eventually got lost, brethren. Even that came to happen. There was a confusion. And there was a, an, a, an actual battle amongst the stars as well. And the stars went from one place to another. Maybe they even went dark. I'm not sure. But something did happen there. And Sisera's men were affected by that in the end. The torrent of Kishon swept them away. The river overflowed and swept them away, my brethren. That ancient torrent, the torrent of Kishon. Oh, my soul, march on in strength. That happened, and Deborah said, Oh, my soul, march on the enemy in strength. Everything worked out right. There's also something important I want you to read here. Then the horse's hooves pounded, my brethren, the galloping, galloping of his steeds. All those things happened back then. The armies of Sisera were riding their horses. They galloped and galloped and galloped. Those horses galloped. They came to fight. The river overflowed with water. There were stones all over the place. And the horses came. And a few moments later, the hooves of the horses ended up pounding. And the horses were no longer able to gallop. All these things we just read in this passage, God shall do when you fight your private wars. When I fight my private wars, my brethren, you have to be filled with the grace of God. You have to try hard to please our Lord God because our Lord God wants to do wonderful things in your lives. And he shall do them. And if you want to, he can do them today. Amen? Now let's go to the real life drama for today. Maria takes nine different sponsorships aiming at providing a better financial life for both her children and her grandchildren. I turned on the television and I saw Dr. Suarez. And that's when he talked about the sponsorship, you know. That's when I took it. I took two and then another two. Nine people now. All those here are sponsored. My children, son-in-law, grandchildren, they all made very little money. My grandson started college, but very soon he was unable to afford it. There wasn't enough money, you know, and I would buy things, but I couldn't afford that. I couldn't even buy shoes. I delayed payments and got letters from collectors. I used to live in a small wooden house, water dripped from the ceiling. I worked at a Catholic church, but I thought, someday I'm going to find a Christian church. And then one day, you know, someone told me that in the place where the club used to be, they opened a Christian church. There was a church from the International Grace of God Church in that place now. I found out where the new church was and I started going there. But I was afraid that someone from the other church where I used to work would see me there, you know. But I didn't see anybody, so I kept going there and very soon found myself happy to be there. Maria is baptized at the Grace Church in 2005. After that happened and after she becomes a sponsor, her children's salaries are raised. Her grandson graduates from college. My grandson is the only man I have. All the others are women. Pray for them all. They have all graduated from college as well. Major in odontology, things like that. They have all graduated. My eldest has her own house. She makes very good money. They've all been greatly blessed. They are all quite healthy and have great jobs. And I do believe that's all thanks to my prayers and the sponsorships, one by one, two by two, and finally all nine of them. In her financial life, she was greatly blessed with her own house, you know. God blessed her with that. God honored her faith and God honored the sponsorships she took on, you know. I was looking for a property to rent and I came to this neighborhood where I live now. I searched and searched. I walked miles every day trying to find a property for me to rent. Everything was too expensive. 
the most affordable houses didn't seem to be in a very in a very good shape you know they were pretty bad but then my son who lives in that area heard i was looking for a house to rent you know he told me when he called me my house my daughter said to him mom is out on the street trying to find a house and he found it and they came here to take a look and i didn't know anything about it but then they came here and brought me with them to show this house i'm going to show you a nice house for you to live in this is your house mom and dad for as long as you live wow it was a great blessing my son's called antonio carlos or toninho wow toninho it's in the area i've been looking for how did you even know it that's when he told me my daughter's name is dora and he said to me well daughter told me you've been looking for a house in that neighborhood it's a very comfortable house there are three bedrooms a large living room an area that you can see there laundry a great backyard here there's a garden there in the front i live exactly where i would like to live in the area i wanted to live i live in a great house well, wow, it doesn't rain inside like it did in the other. She had to overcome many challenges, but today she's a homeowner and she's, she's very happy now. Jesus Christ is the one who gave me all this. In the past, I didn't have so much faith. This faith that he was all. I actually searched other gods because I searched, you know what I'm talking about, right? He is the only true God, the one who saves, heals and delivers you. Wow, praise the Lord. That's the battle I'm talking about. Look at the torrent of Kishon right there. Look at the stars. Everything worked out right when Maria always decided to follow the instructions of Jesus. Follow Jesus. God knows exactly what to do. And now let's go to the question and answer segment. Are the parents who don't want their children to have a relationship, get engaged or married, being used by the devil? Not really. Perhaps it's a young girl or young boy, they don't know anything about life. But still, instead of studying and getting prepared for life and searching God above all things, very early in life they compromise themselves and can't honor that and other things can happen that eventually drift them away from God. It's written in the Bible, do not stir up nor awaken love till it pleases. Now if their father or mother decide they don't want that too, the best thing, just as they got married, is that everybody gets married. God made us all equal, and we all have that need in our hearts. I'm going to bless those who are watching from home, and then I'll bless you. But it's valid for you too. God, I'm going to start praying now. What a wonderful meeting. Oh God, I feel your holy presence among us all. I would like to ask you to please pour your blessings on everyone who's praying together with us right now. Please send all your divine help, my Lord. Please pour your blessings on us all, my Lord. Please fill us with your great power now, and I rebuke all evil activities, and I command them to leave in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you say, Amen.